yeah so uh, hello everyone so welcome to lecture 3 uh, on this uh, course in the last session what we had done i'll just briefly uh, explain and there are lecture 2 and lecture 2.5 videos are also available on this playlist so please have a look at it so what we have built last time is this particular box uh, which you can see uh, here so inside this box we kept a uh, uh, couple of devices uh, for uh, one for measuring power which is pcm 400t and the other one is for reading the parameters from the measurements and uh, from there it is displaying on to the screen in our uh, system so these are the two devices pcm 400 and esp and uh, how are the connections again you can see there is a phase and line coming phase and neutral going to the load in between there is a switch and uh, the load is connected here uh, uh, with a uh, like a bulb then i have a current coil s1 s2 and then phase and neutral power side connections for the pcm and on the other side ground ground is common 5 volt is connected to 5 volt the transmit pin of pcm is connected to receive pin of esp the receive pin of pcm is connected to transmit pin of esp so one is transmitting other is receiving and uh, so on so when the program is done in arduino and then uh, loaded into the esp the program starts executing sends a read command then the measurements are given back to the esp and the esp in turn sends them back to the uh, screen for display and based on this we have monitored a light bulb we have monitored a iron box and so on so this is what this box uh, we have kind of uh, developed so far next the idea is this box will be uh, transported or shipped or you know sent by courier to students across the country and about 30 students uh, we are having 25 to 30 students so next step is what we want to do next how how this project will be yeah so before i uh, i give my idea uh, i welcome any any ideas from others so what can we do next in this uh, overall initiative we can monitor pattern in usage yeah so uh, one one of the student was telling we can monitor pattern in usage now we have to talk it in the context of uh, the entire team right uh, so we are uh, about close to 25 to 30 people registered this course so everybody is doing parallelly right so what what new thing can we do okay so monitoring means what so again uh, what mr sahir is saying will monitor monitor means will you just uh, sit in front of uh, your computer monitor and then uh, look at the readings coming or can in what way you want to monitor what do you mean by monitoring yeah so suggestions record when it peak usage and optimize distribution based on that so good so one more point uh, uh, it is being suggested recording the peak okay so uh, let me make a note of it because later i'll i'll cover this point also yeah so any other student want to give any suggestion before i talk to i i i ask charan to give his suggestion yeah so any others sir yeah yes people sir every device sir every device can communicate with each other using peer to peer module or uh, from that type of communication so that we can gather all type of data that how uh, 30 different devices at 30 different location are transferring the data okay so you are talking about peer to peer communication but then why do you require peer to peer why not uh, directly there could be one central server and then everybody can send the data to that server right uh, yes sir yes sir it is also okay so if that is the case then what is the 
uh, how do you propose that we send the data to the server into one central location sir uh, we can so we can set up one i think uh, set up a local server okay uh, using any of the tools for example bam server or using php scripting so once a local server is available with us we can uh, try different communication protocols from each of the devices uh, so we can do, do it like that sir okay so uh, i just uh, opened a new uh, sheet so now that uh, i started giving suggestions so let's write so the first point i have written was uh, recording the peak uh, power consumption so i'll just increase the font size okay so you are able to see it right now yeah so what you are saying is uh, collecting the data from all the devices and uh, storing in the central server any other uh, thing we can do yeah so let's continue the discussion so i think charan you can come in now yeah so we can create a appliance level data set okay so the advantage of this appliance level data set is that uh, whoever so working on neural networks or any other things uh, there is a concept of load disaggregation and with the real time data they can train the appliance level data and then identify which appliance is on which appliance is off appliance data set uh, can be used for load dis aggregation aggregation to determine to when determine. a particular uh, appliance is on or off. off just by looking at the overall data yeah with the aggregate data and the next and point so like yeah you want to elaborate on that sir Uh, no i think we will we, we'll, if unless if some student want to ask a doubt we can elaborate but let's continue anything else yeah. you want to suggest like we will be seeing that uh, three star rating fridges five star rating fridges and we will be seeing yeah. the difference of energy consumption and we will be actually yeah. knowing what actually the difference that rating is okay so compare the and benchmark the uh, consumption of energy of uh, various appliances uh, like a three star fridge versus five star fridge etc so uh, just uh, to elaborate on this uh, some of you might uh, be monitoring refrigerator right so what is the star rating of the fridge that you are having so do you does anybody know uh, the star rating of the fridge that uh, you are having in your house so in a day how many units does a fridge consume anybody anyway but did you understood understand the point that we are trying to do compare and benchmark so for example somebody's fridge is in uh, one house uh, versus other person's fridge so how these fridges are uh, behaving whether they are uh, whether there is a let's say there are 30 students and all the 30 have uh, fridges in their houses uh, then if we plot all the consumptions like uh, on the same uh, graph and then plot if some are low and some are high then can we tell that uh, those which are high 
the fridge needs to be uh, serviced or maintained or whatever repaired can we identify such kind of things yes sir uh, that's a major idea like uh, we'll be knowing like when the fridges are getting old uh, they yeah. consume more power so unknowingly we will pay more bill old appliances consume uh, more power and uh, unknowingly paying more right so the cost analysis of uh, each star rating from different appliances and different data okay so uh analysis of star rating versus consumption okay okay so can you identify any abnormal uh, uh, situation yes sir like certain times in the home some trippings may happen so if it was monitored for all appliances we may know which is the reason for it abnormal consumption of a particular appliance uh, this may lead to early detection of a computer failure so uh, if we actually uh, i mean uh, do this we by doing some data analysis or something we may find this kind of a uh, scenario okay good so anything more so i the heading what i am saying is uh, assuming that all the students in this course is uh, receive and install the energy monitoring device Uh, at their respective homes, what can be done as the next level, as the next step? So this is what we are right now discussing. Yeah. So any other idea? Variation of temperature profiles and uh, appliances. How the summer season. seasonal variation profiles of appliances like how the refrigerator behave during the season various variation of seasons okay so um uh, i am not able to find a proper color okay maybe this one yeah so that is also interesting so let me come down so monitoring of seasonal variations and impact of uh, weather conditions so that means uh, the the appliance may be same but uh, the appliance may be located uh, like the same same appliance but different seasons how much a daily consumption in winter for the refrigerator how much daily consumption in summer for a refrigerator so intuition says that in winter the refrigerator should consume less power yeah. so we can do that so with reference to the eighth point we how like air conditioner behave with the different temperature level like when we are operating it at 18 degree or when we are op operating it at 27 or 26 so that we will be forced to you like we will get an idea and we will shift uh, towards the 26 or 25 temperature when we are using ac okay so regarding acs uh, sir that point we can keep uh, in a more uh, defined way like uh, comparing the inverter acs and then uh, uh, dual inverter acs inverter acs and normal acs inverter acs and dual inverter acs you don't even know what that is so Or what actually does is that sir uh, it contains the stepper motor type compressor fans so here the inverter action is mainly 
to uh, vary the temperatures whatever so if we say 27 how much the compressor fan should rotate at what speed so mm. that action will be done by the inverter so that is the reason it consumes less power in the normal ac uh, whatever the temperature the rotation of the compressor fan will be constant inverter ac is supposed to be supposed to be uh, more efficient than the normal ac Does anybody have inverter AC in your house? Mine is inverter AC, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. So now, uh, I, I, adding to what uh, Divyansh was saying, uh, the temperature control, right? So uh, her uh, point is like temperature versus power consumption. What is the uh, power if it is temperature okay. is eighteen? So, what is the power if it is twenty? Temperature is twenty-seven. So ambient temperature, that is outside temperature. Uh, comma set point temperature comma uh, power consumption or energy consumption so the inter interrelation or interdependence okay, next what else you can do sir we can also set up demand response based system as we have discussed in the smart grid class earlier demand response demand response systems yes. so for example uh, monitoring the devices uh, its critical peak pricing or uh, under or going for a customer base approach uh, for example we have discussed about the prosumer approach in which the consumer is also a producer for electricity so it can implement and monitor those systems devices power consumption uh, against the uh, against the time of the day tariff time of the day prices you see so uh, anything else sir so, like we can include washing machine like and different modes okay so uh, identifying uh, the various or simply so the load pattern yes sir load pattern of uh, washing machine so like uh, whatever it has different stages right example uh, spin wash wash rinse spin in etc but what is the benefit of doing this sir generally people will like just to will know the pattern then we can uh, in the disaggregation we can find out like yeah so uh, yeah so uh, we can identify when uh, when the washing machine was switched on and all these things yeah yes. okay so again there will be ratings right uh, comparing top load and bottom uh, top load versus front load etc okay ratings are ratings okay so what else can we do So here we are only. Uh, this is called actually use cases. Uh, in other words, so okay. So what else? So can you control the devices such that? Uh, Control the devices such that they so they can can be operated only during certain times. So this is my uh, one one thought. Like for example, uh, 
so tv uh, should be off you know by 11 pm something like this so after that even if you want to switch on it should not switch up okay so this is one example do you do you see there is a benefit in that yes sir like uh, we can keep a target of monthly saving how much we want to save the monthly energy bill since we know the patterns accordingly we can target uh, the savings say if the student is spending some 500 or 1000 for this project by when he can return it by saving uh, his energy bill in his home okay so by knowing the demand patterns uh, generate recommendations for saving in electricity bills okay and then uh, from that uh, calculation of saving and uh, compare with cost of the monitoring device sir yeah there are two chat uh, question uh, chat yeah, comments no, I, i noted so we can calculate effective rating decline over time okay that is also interesting for those who do crypto mining it will be very effective ah uh, we will discuss that also i saw so uh, sir we can even set a daily daily limit right using introducing the gsm set daily limits uh, we can introduce gsm into our circuit somehow and uh, make us get a message and we exceed our daily limit introduce uh, dsm g dsm for okay. oh, dsm you are saying g sir g yeah this is what right uh, yes device and uh, we can get a message whenever we exceed our daily limit Uh, i i think without uh, gsm using wifi also we can do that since yeah. uh, I, I, rather than adding another module uh, we can use a wifi and uh, use the way to sms platforms and using the aps you can send a message without the gsm module see uh, we, we are assuming uh, that uh, you know see if i again show this uh, box uh, so in this box we are assuming that uh, there will be uh, what you call uh, wifi is connectivity so so if wifi is there then gsm is not required so i was just saying we can calculate what uh, sometime back i just missed it uh, uh, demand pattern generate the savings comparison uh, that actually from the chart points i think yeah effective de rating decline over time yeah so can you elaborate on this so what do you mean by this i think is uh, uh, something like lifetime estimation and how much life it has lost is it something like that the sahir has shown so like bought the plans it may be four star so we can judge like in today's time what is their effective rating like is it now just a three star appliance so we can compare like if we are still sticking to the old appliance how much power we are wasting versus if we buy the new appliance like the okay. cost so, comparison and compare with the uh, cost of the new appliance like if we buy a four star appliance new like how much power will save versus the cost of the new appliance like suppose a new fridge or something like i think if we buy a five star it might not be the five star appliance after one year so it could be only four star yes sir so uh, a new five star appliance may uh, be degrade i'll say yes sir
So how to detect this? So again, we can do this. Uh, this. Yeah. So uh, crypto mining. So uh, I don't know how many are uh, familiar with this uh, thing. So to the extent what I understand. So we are using computers to uh, generate uh, bitcoins, right? Yes, like I want to like highlight something about this. Uh, like yeah, yeah, go ahead. We, uh, whenever we do, we like we go for the crypto mining. Uh, like electricity bill got like thrice what we are getting right now. Like in I in my house, like my husband do that, so I was aware of it. So I our electricity okay. bill got triple, and we earn something also. But uh, with this device, we can monitor like how much a ban like. Yeah. Uh, like how much like we have we have to pay for the electricity and how much we are like get, getting profit from doing this mining i know this is like beyond this uh, like electrical appliances thing but it will be quite effective when we do when we monitor during the crypto mining thing how much extra we are paying for uh, you know no how much uh, profit we can earn uh, uh, when we discard like when, when we will like Monitor our electricity bill. How much we earn? Oh yeah. Calculate the uh, profit. So right there, uh, Divyanchi. So this is. Uh, Uh, right here this is a uh, team for writing a conference paper at least so we can see that here right away yes so we, anyway we'll wa we'll work on that thing later so next uh, what was the other point we can suggest better appliances which are more uh, power effective based on our usage compare cost of new equipment saving in power uh, the same point uh, we have just written right uh, yeah yeah so uh, there 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 could be i think we are almost uh, end of the time so there could be more points we will uh, eventually add that so i i call this use cases of uh, energy monitoring in fact i, I can i can detect uh, you know so the regular things like you know uh, low voltage problem Okay, so uh, keep track. Number of interruptions and uh, duration of interruptions. Okay, so in in one month, uh, how many times the power was interrupted? See, sometimes when you are sleeping, night time there might be power cut, and again power came back. You don't even know, but. Uh, Uh, this thing we can calculate. That means uh, uh, calculating reliability of the supply. Okay, so low voltage problem or high voltage problem. Okay, so uh, also we can add. Uh, Power factor problem, etc. So, any other last minute two three points? Shall we add? We we'll, of course we'll make the list more and more uh, full. But uh, for the time being, what else we can add? any other student wants to suggest any other thing okay so i think we yeah somebody is saying something so we can introduce uh, sorry we can introduce data analytics 
which can for what which can be used. sir it can be used in lieu of the load forecasting which we do in uh, electrical engineering i guess some points are added in this regard already but uh, when we talk about load forecasting hmm. as an aspect then we can also include the data analytics part there so yeah so we can also compare the our consumption data with the weather data local weather data and we can compare like if it was a sunny day or a clear day like did we use less power or it was a hot day or a cold day like on a daily basis so we can do load forecast better like so the power is like efficiently distributed based on that so ultimately what we are trying to do is uh, build some data sets so we can uh, Build some uh, standard data sets. For uh, various appliances from various locations across the country, which in turn. can be useful for uh, for the research so right now if somebody wants to do research they are depending on foreign uh, data sets so we can generate uh, indian uh, data sets we can uh, make that available for others so they can they can uh, use these things right uh, so it's not that uh, we only have to do everything for ourselves so we can we can nicely formulate the data sets and uh, we can release them uh, not uh, if not uh, full data at least some data we can uh, make it available so that people will work on it that's one more suggestion i'm having so anything else okay so i think we'll uh, we have collected enough points in fact if you sit we there will be many more points so as it is uh, we have done some uh, brainstorming kind of thing today so i, I am uh, see eventually when after doing the basic work uh, of uh, basically monitoring uh, you know uh, some appliance and all these things then depending on see everybody need not do everything depending on the individual students interest they can pick up one or two points and then further elaborate and you know do it as the, their project or something like that okay so so uh, that is my my kind of request is that all the time uh, keep uh, keep thinking about what to do what can be done how what you want to do all the things and accordingly uh, you go ahead in this course okay so shall i stop here right now and we'll see in the next class thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir